We're heading back to the X68000 to close a chapter on our experience with the Expert series, which will require a bit of testing, transplanting, and setting up. If you spend enough time fixing someone else's computer, you start saying stuff like this. Well, it's probably going to be an X68000. I'm like, I want one more for my own because they look nice. Yeah, I'm hooked. So it looks like we need one each. And our strategy to not spend too much on these often rare expensive Japanese computers from the 80s is to go for the most scuffed up looking ones. Although to save yourself a lot of troubles, you really do want to at least see some evidence that it will power on. Let's have a look inside and hopefully everything is looking all nice inside. In fact, when you look at the case, it's looking a whole lot better here than it did in the seller's photographs. And it's looking good, no signs of rust. And as a HD version should, it's still got the hard drive. We've probably had more floppy drives turn up that don't work than do. So hopefully these protective cardboard slips have done the trick. Google Translate kinda gets the gist of what they say. We'll have a look inside the expansion slots and hopefully we have a bonus which wasn't mentioned in the listing. Maybe a memory expansion. And the answer is... Nope. Completely empty. Checking the other side, it is looking a pretty nice and shiny, but my goodness, look at all that dust. Good to see nothing spilt into the machine. It's only dust, so we can take it outside to blow all that out. The power supply though is rather stinky, so we'll take that one out. And we do have a modern replacement for it, which I covered in a previous video. Next up, we'll remove the screws down the bottom so that we can check out the IO board, which is there, which aside from being quite dusty is looking pretty good. That battery is probably dead and needs replacing. And we also want to clean the contacts as we have in the past found the computer not working so well just because yeah, the contacts between the boards were dirty. It needs a little bit of plastic glue but it's time to turn it on and test. We have a working power light and a floppy disk light, but there is no picture or sound. Fortunately, the fix looks rather simple. Yeah, the 12 volts was unplugged. Oh look, it works now. Who would have guessed? Actually, the whole machine is starting to look really good. Even the memory, the two megabytes on board is reporting as okay. So let's go and plug in a memory expansion and another easy win. The X68000 mem test is correctly reporting the full amount of memory. So since the case is about the only thing that's kind of crud about this machine, let's go and transplant. The first X68000 we bought it looks rather nice, although it was caked in and full of this rather weird orange gunk. It cleaned up quite nicely, but wasn't very reliable. Its power supply was in an even worse condition with the capacitors pretty well wrecked. Whereas the caps on the logic boards might have been replaced, but they looked fine and tested okay. Yeah, it's not always caps, hey? You also got to recognize what your limitations are and move it on to someone else who can fix it. And let's make one nice looking and working expert out of two. We have some replacement rubber feet, which uh, make it look pretty nice. We've even replaced the rusted ground nut from the original power supply with a nice shiny new one. Then it's just a matter of taking out all the old electronics from the Expert HD and putting it into the Expert case. If your X68000 is like the Expert and has one of these non-rechargeable lithium cell batteries, you don't need to do this next bit. But if it is like the ACE and has a rechargeable NICAD battery and you want to replace it with a 
non-rechargeable CR2032 or equivalent, then you need to put in a diode and resistor. And this is a bit of a circuit that we found on the internet. And then if you want an extra bit of safety, put it on a wire so that you can tuck it safely away from the logic board. Now that the case transplant is complete, it's great to see that it's still working. I reckon it's also probably the best pair of floppy drives we've ever received in an X68000. Maybe the floppy drive protectors do work. Or we got lucky. As cool as the floppy drives are, we still would rather prefer to use a blue SCSI. To do that, you need to set up the SASE bootloader. You can download its floppy disk image from here, and I'll leave a link down below. Once the floppy loads, change the directory to sxsi, load up bootset.x and enter in the SRAM address. Enter in the unit start time and you can experiment with which value works the best. You can now reset your machine and every time you load up the computer, you will now see the sassy bootloader. If you actually prefer to check the floppy drives before the sassy drive when booting up, go and load up switch, then change the boot option to STD, which I assume means standard. Then cursor right down to the bottom of the screen, hit enter, then hit the Y key and your options will be saved. So as you can see, it seeks the floppy drive first and if there is a bootable floppy in there, it will load that. But if you eject the floppy drive, it will go straight to the SASE loader. We used to use internal blue SCSIs on the X68000s, but then I found that you can get a Centronics version, which is so much easier for accessing the SD card. And once again, we are pleasantly surprised to see it working first time. So good. We did forget one setting though. The memory is not reporting the full eight megabytes. The drive image, which I'll link down below, does include a switch on the C drive, which you can access by hitting L. And inside the bin directory, yep, there it is, switch. So let's go and enable the full eight megabytes of RAM, which is pretty easy. You just go to memory and then select the correct amount that you actually do have installed in the machine. Then save your settings and reboot the machine. Otherwise, you still won't see the actual full amount that you've set until you do so. The X68000 is all set up for use which means all we got left to do now is some testing. For which we'll go with one of the, we'll say, preferred methods of testing. Oh, it's working. Hooray. How boring. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll take the win, which now means we have enough working X68000s for both me and Mark. He's got the expert and I've got the ace. Both awesome machines, pretty similar, just a few small differences. And it's going to be fun playing some games. Not that fixing it wasn't a little bit fun. Okay, it was, it was quite fun. And we do have a few more things we want to try out with these machines, a few devices, and of course, plenty of games. If you like that and a bit of variety of retro happenings, subscribe to the channel, like the video if you want to, and most of all, thanks for watching.